Jenny Smash. He said, well, I can see it's a box, but what's in the box? He said, well, my box is in my box. Yeah, here's they got the message, you see. The guy said to Jack, Where are you guys from then? Can't miss Nathan. Tom says, oh, it's a stupid I don't know what comes Nathan is. You should have told him we came from Wishaw. <laughs> as if they were the Wishaws. The boys' popularity had reached dizzy heights, and they were in demand far beyond the theatre stage. This can cost you a fortune. No, where'd you buy those? Agnes much cheaper. Most of Agnes' whiskey are still at last year's prices. Help yourself. They epitomised Scottishness, and everyone wanted to be associated with them. Don't kill the piano. I'm hiding my whiskey in there. This is almost like a commercial for Agnes' stores. Meanwhile, the TV series went from strength to strength and was a regular part of the TV schedules. They filmed one of Scotland's first colour location recordings in the Isle of Arran. Boys worked relentlessly. At home, they balanced theatre shows with TV and recording commitments, while internationally, their reputation continued to grow as they were invited to perform at some of the world's most prestigious concert venues. Just to appear on that stage in the Opera House, just to walk on it. As a matter of fact, I've still got the wee, uh, because they give you a brass plate on number one room, number one dressing room. And I've still got that. And to think that Jimmy Shand and Ian Powery were number two. <laughs> you know, and I think it was only then that Jack and I started to realise that I think we've made it, you know. <laughs> Very memorably impersonated by Stanley Baxter. Rather than be in any way offended, both of them took it as an ultimate compliment because no longer were they just two lads from Wishaw, but it was a stamp of recognition na nationally. I can well remember our first engagement. It was in the Miners Institute in Tilly Sugar. We got 30 bob and a cold pie. How things have changed. Ah, we got hot pies now. <laughs> Quick flattered at the time, you know. Uh, to see a comic of his stature, uh, you know, doing a takeoff of Jack and I, and he, he, he looked like Janet, and he even sat at the piano. Jack was always quite erect when he was playing the piano, and uh, he had me off to a tea because I had the dark eyebrows then. Alone, boy, was standing so sad and destitute. I said, Would you mind? <laughs> As we moved into the 70s, the TV portrayal of Scottish variety acts began to change. With Elvis died for six months with nothing but Elvis records on the radio, and Bing died for six months with nothing but Bing records on the radio, we all hope that Tom and Jack live forever. <laughs> The danger is that there was an element of send-up of the Scottish music scene. It didn't always sit comfortably with me, that aspect of it, because I don't like to downplay the significance of our music. But fun is fun, and that's all, so you mustn't be too sensitive in this business. Somebody made fun of them, they just shrugged it off, took it as a compliment, and on they went. But nothing, it seemed, could catch Tom and Jack. Throughout the 80s and 90s, they remained in great demand overseas, while at home they combined theatre work with guest appearances at special events, like this New Year party from Laird Castle. When the new Scottish music series Northern Nights came on air, the boys were a regular feature, and they hadn't lost any of their on-stage persona. They used to bounce about like a, like a, a new jet. <laughs> and people were always amazed, you know, even, even in these late 70s, they were still bouncing about there. But they got the MBE, you know. 
they were very pleased and highly honoured to get it. But they didn't, they didn't kind of flaunt it in any way. You know? You'd ask them about it. <laughs> I suppose if you hang in there long enough... <laughs> Something's going to happen. <laughs> Few acts can claim a 50-year career in show business, but Tom and Jack passed that milestone in 2008. He said, the only thing is now, he said, I'm going on and I can't even remember the words of some of the songs. I said, it comes to us all. They had excelled in every aspect of their careers. As musicians and entertainers, they had taken Scotland's music to audiences all over the world. But in 2013, Jack's health began to decline. We were in front of the band, and uh, Jack forgot some of his lyrics. I remember going home that night thinking, oh, maybe, maybe it's time that we called it a day. So that's where we ended up. After a period of ill health, Jack Alexander passed away on the 2nd of November, 2013. The actual funeral was, was something that Jack would, he would have loved it. Jack realised He'd had a very good, full life, doing what he loved doing, entertaining people, doing this wonderful act with his brother Tom. And the church was absolutely jam-packed. 900 people there. But when the cocktails was left the church with long as you, the people in the house he was standing in the pot. I mean, I can't remember it ever happened for anybody, anybody else in our business. Couldn't really be sad in that situation because you really were genuinely celebrating a, a vibrant life that had taken place. And I don't think by shedding sadness, it was in any way disrespectful. If anything, it was even more respectful to his memory. He was a star man. He was a blue-eyed, blonde-haired guy that bounced about the stage like a lunatic. You know, people used to marvel at him. He was, he was quite incredible.